Get back to our top story. The National Energy Board out with this report on the Trans Mountain Expansion Project. And you know what they're saying? They're saying Ottawa should go ahead with it, that the benefits outweigh the risks. Some industry leaders pointing to increasing amount of delays as a source of frustration in the energy sector. Let's bring in Gwyn Morgan, former CEO of Encana, joining us now from Victoria. Always good to see you, Gwyn. Thank you. So let's start with the National Energy Board, what they had to say today. They took a look at the risks. They said, we hear your concerns and we recognize them, but the benefits outweigh those risks. How do you feel about that determination? Well, first of all, let me say that the whole exercise was a triumph from a process over common sense. And let me tell you why. It was obvious in the first place that there was no other decision logically to make. You know, they're, they're, we're talking about one extra tanker a day going through the Salish Sea waters. Uh, there already are 1,300 uh, ships, car, car, I should say tankers and, and tug-pulled uh, petroleum barges a year. There are 10,000 large ships, at least as large as, as, as those big crude carriers going through those waters a year. There are, there are t thousands or hundreds at least of great big cruise ships going through those same waters. And there are thousands of big, uh, the, of these very large BC ferries. On, on top of that, like tens of thousands of small boats, per personal boats. So to think that one ship a day addition was needed a big study to prove, to show that this wasn't going to have a big negative effect on the existing situation was ridiculous in the first place. What, if you're going to look at all of the impact on the whales, you have to look at all those ships, and that's not the NEB's job. That's somebody else's job. Would you hope now, given the fact that the federal government is the owner of this pipeline, <laughs> they use our money, our taxpayer money, to buy it, and now they have the NEB saying, we think you should go ahead, that they can expedite the matter? They've had 90 days now to do their additional consultation with, uh, with the indigenous groups. I mean, that, this whole process, and that's what this is all about now at this, at this point. Uh, you know, there were 131 uh, native groups or indigenous groups consulted by Kinder Morgan. There was the same number at the hearing. There were 17,000 questions answered. Then the, the government of Canada decided that that wasn't enough. They were going to do it even better saying that the Harper government didn't do well enough, so they're gonna go back with a bunch of ministers. And they've done that. They said they've been doing that over the last number, the last 90 days, uh, and have to, to see another 117 indigenous groups. So if they haven't had enough consultation over those 90 days, and they continue to defer, then I think the industry has every reason to give up hope on this government. Earlier I spoke with John Manley. He knows his way around Ottawa. I, we heard from Rachel Notley when she answered questions from the media. Both of them sounded optimistic that in an election year that the Trudeau Liberals would like to get some shovels into the ground on this before the vote to show Canadians they've made progress. Do, do you have that same optimism? Well, the reality is that they should have been able to announce at the same time as the NEB or just a few days later that they've concluded that they've had the consultations and they're moving ahead. There's absolutely no reason at all why they haven't had enough time to do that. So if they don't do that in the next few days, uh, then it means they're, they're delaying. And you have to come back right to the same point of all, the beginning of this government, that they were against the, the idea of pipelines. They, they, they canceled or, or rejected three other ones. And, uh, and now they've got the last one, and they've had time to figure it all out, do their consultation, and move ahead. So, um, you know, I worry about their, their real uh, sincerity about actually wanting to build a pipeline if they, haven't got, if they can't announce now after all that. So you're really holding their feet to the fire. You're not saying 90 days. You're saying if you don't see something by next week, then you don't think they're sincere about getting this project done. Well, my point is they've had 90 days, which is the amount of time that the NEB had. And they're supposed to be doing all that consultation during those same, that same period. They had three months to do it, on top of all those other consultations I outlined earlier. So they should have been ready. If they're really sincere about getting this pipeline built, they should have been able, ready to announce the, the, the commence them to construction at the, as soon as the NEB came down there, brings down their, uh, their decision. If they don't, then one has to question whether they're really serious about building this pipeline. 
They're heading, of course, into a fall election. Uh, from the people I talked to in the energy patch in Western Canada, a lot of them are not pleased with this government. If if they can deliver on this in a timely fashion, could they change their political fortunes or is there a lot more to it than just Trans Mountain? Well, I think it's, it's more the other way around. It's, it's if they can't. Because if they can't get this project done, which they own, and after all of this, this incredible consultation and all of this unnecessary review by the additional review by the NEB, if they can't get, the pro get on with that project now, then what does it say about Canada's ability to do anything? So it's a bigger picture here. Now, you know the business obviously very well from your track record. If they can get the shovels in the ground and get the expansion complete, uh, this, as I said, you, me, everyone in Canada, we own this asset. Do we have a good chance of selling it for more than what we had to pay for it? Oh, well, there's no question about that. I mean, we've been, you know, even during this 90 days, a lot of those days until they did some re reduction of production in Alberta, there was six, 50 to $60 million a day going out the day, out the window, mostly to subsidize American refiners. So that was the cost of this 90 days already. For, that's each day I'm talking about. So, uh, you know, the, the thing is that they really have to, uh, re they've already cost uh, so much more and delayed so much more. And I, you know, I have a lot of contacts in the industry and, and you know, it's, it's every day I hear more layoffs. I hear more people uh, really thinking they don't have a future. I have people with their mortgages and other issues. And you know what? They don't think the government of Canada cares. And that's clearly what they need. And they've tried a number of occasions to go out west and extend different olive branches, but it just doesn't seem to be working. Western Canada definitely very dissatisfied with this government. Well, I mean, logically, I mean, they, they, they killed the Energy East. There could have been, they killed Northern Gateway, which would, been on, which, would been on, which would have been going by now. And all of their moves t got down to one very fraught project. And uh, now they've got all their eggs in that basket, and they're not even hatching those eggs and getting on with it. All right. Always great to get your uh, insight. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. That was Gwen Morgan, the former CEO of Encana.